Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Continue our series, Intersect, the mysterious intersection of God in our world and in our lives. Last week we focused uh, on the theme, Someone Worth Following. Um, it's hard to know who to follow. Uh, Jesus comes to us by his spirit and plants himself in our hearts and he says, follow me. Uh, and today uh, we're going to focus on the theme uh, under God's word, something worth living for, something worth living for, uh, d dear Christian friends. Everyone needs something worth living for. It's a basic need that we have. People search for that. In, um, in a little uh, trifold, I talked about A Rebel Without a Cause. That was actually a movie before my time. I never saw the movie. Okay, I don't know. How many saw the movie? Anybody? Uh, is it on this week? Okay, it's on this week. Rebel Without a Cause. I, like I said, I've never seen the movie, but what I get from that title is that a young man uh, uh, desperately wants to have something worth living for. Huh? Even though he's got everything, he doesn't have anything to be excited about because he grows up in America and he's got everything he needs to, he needs to have, huh? I don't know how that goes, whether that's the movie or not, but that's what I get from the title. And so he finds something to rebel against, something to fill his life, something to have meaning in his life for. Everyone needs something worth living for. I think that's why sometimes kids tie themselves to gangs. It gives them something worth living for. It's why, it's why professional football players go back again and again after concussion, after concussion, after concussion, because they say it's worth it. It's worth the excitement and be tied to the team, huh? Even if I'm going to end up with Alzheimer's when I'm 55 years old is something worth living for. But you know what the Bible tells us about that? It says, meaningless, meaningless. Everything is meaningless. It's in Ecclesiastes, first chapter. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about this statement. Meaningless, meaningless, Everything is meaningless. King Solomon wrote that, the wisest man that ever lived, right? And, of course, it's God's words, so the Spirit gave him those words to write down. So this is God talking. In one sense, everything about this life is totally meaningless. And King Solomon ought to know, in this book, Ecclesiastes, he kind of relates how he, how he looked for meaning in amassing wealth. And he says it's meaningless, finally. He's just going to pass it off to some poor dunce that doesn't know what he's doing. That's about what he says, honest. And he says how he looks for meaning in the great sandcastles he built in his life. These great, awesome things that he accomplished. He says, ah, uh, it's meaningless, finally. And he looked for meaning in the great amount of wisdom and knowledge that he could amass. And finally, he says, you know, that's, that's good, but <laughs> he just ended up dead like everybody else. So what's, what's the meaning of being a little smarter when you die? And he looked for meaning in pleasure. I mean, the guy had like 300 wives, you know? No, honest, yeah. He went crazy looking for meaning in pleasure. Couldn't find it there either. Meaningless, meaningless. Everything is meaningless. God gave him those words to write down, but he'd experienced it in his life. He tried to fill his life with everything a life can be filled with on this earth. And he did it in a much greater and grandiose way than any of us ever could approach. And this is the truth that God led him to. Meaningless, meaningless. Everything is meaningless. 
You struggle with that in your life sometimes? Those great things that you work so hard for once you achieve them, it's kind of a hollow achievement, hollow victory. Or those things you work to maintain. Huh? I was in the gym yesterday. I came home to my wife and I said, God, it's so hard now. Huh? And it's just going to get worse, not getting better. Meaningless, meaningless. Everything is meaningless. You struggle with that? Or maybe those who are the closest to you, those that you've poured yourself into, just live lives that hurt you. And you wonder why you poured so much of your life into that? I remember reading a book once uh, on the French Foreign Legion and uh, the, it, it, the, the history of, of the Foreign Legion is amazing. They really didn't care about the people. They, they were like cannon fodder, right? Uh, very, very high rate of, of, of uh, ca- casualties and so forth. And, um, and, and they, they, would, they would throw these guys. They'd be over here, then be over here. And, and there was a time in history when, when the government of France switched sides so often that, that they didn't even know who they were fighting. And, and, and one time this guy in the French Foreign Legion, he... Uh, he, he, his brother was on the other side. And the brother said, what are you doing over there? Who are you fighting for? And the guy didn't even know. He didn't know because, because the, king, the king of France was flipping sides so much. And he says, I fight for the legion. What kind of purpose is that? Are you ever there? You don't even know what you're fighting for finally? In Jesus Christ today, God would intersect in our lives and give us a purpose that transcends every moment of our lives. This is only half the story. He wants you to leave today with the other half. When Jesus blasted onto the scene in his public ministry. And that's about what he did. John the Baptist was doing his thing. All of a sudden, Jesus is there. And then John gets arrested and put into prison. That's how our text starts. After John was put in prison. You know, most folks would kind of read that and gloss over and just go on to the important stuff, what Jesus is saying and doing. But I think this has a huge, a huge meaning for us in the context. After John was put into prison, Now, now think about the life John lived. He didn't have any wealth. In fact, he had no home. He lived out in in the wilderness, huh? Uh, Didn't have any fancy clothes. He had camel's hair. That always gets me. You know, my skin would go nuts with camel's hair on me, you know? He had had camel's hair. That's worse than hand-me-downs, huh? And he ate grasshoppers. Now, I don't know if he, if, if he baked them, boiled them, or ate them raw, right? But he ate grasshoppers. And they weren't chocolate-covered, like I said with the kids. He ate grasshoppers. Had a little honey to go with it. How's that sound for you? Yeah. Yuck. Okay. So here is a man who had no wealth, built nothing from a human perspective with his life. had no pleasure from a human perspective. Not even the pleasure of a good steak, huh? And for his trouble, he was languishing in prison and he would be barbarically butchered in his death. He would have his head severed from his body. after John was put into prison. Somehow that life meant something. Somehow there was purpose there. Somehow there was meaning there. Without wealth, without grand achievements, 
without pleasure, suffering a horrible death. There was meaning there. Jesus came. Go ahead. And these are the words he said. Would you read these with me? The gospel, I'm sorry, the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the gospel. The kingdom of God is near. The, the, the Greek word here is agus. It's a fun word to say. Can you say that? Agus. Agus. All right? it, means, it doesn't mean just like near. It means it's right here. So what Jesus is saying to folks, he's standing in front of them and he's saying, the kingdom of God is right here. That's what he's saying. It's not near you. It's right here. I am the kingdom of God. That's what he was saying. Just like he said, I am the bread of life. Huh? I am the kingdom of God. It has come into your midst. God has stepped into your world and into your lives, intersect. Huh? The kingdom of God is near. Repent. Repent, it, it means to turn around. What do you think that means in the context? We just came from John the Baptist, remember? Boy, you wouldn't want that life, would you? You wouldn't be wearing those kind of clothes. You wouldn't want to be eating grasshoppers. You wouldn't want to live a life where you don't accomplish anything according to human standards, would you? I mean, you certainly wouldn't want to be thrown in jail for it and murdered there. You wouldn't want that, would you? You want to, <laughs> you want to in your life, have all the opposite things. I think what Jesus is saying here is turn from those things and see in John's life a life of meaning. A life lived in relationship with God. A life lived in service to Him. A life lived so that in every moment it was lived with God. That's the repent here. It's to turn away from a meaningless life. It's to turn away with trying to fill our lives with sandcastles that will all fall down and be washed away. It's a life lived turned away from the meaningless of looking for meaning in pleasure or the amassing of wealth or the achievement of great things or even a great wisdom and growth. Repentance here is to turn to a different way of life, a life finally in which there is meaning in every breath we take. Do you struggle with meaning in your existence? With purpose? The gift that Jesus Christ would give you today is to have meaning in every breath you take. Turn away from life alone and receive by faith life in Jesus Christ. This word, believe, you know, in, in, in Western thought, we, we have such a way of, of, of kind of dissecting things. We, we dissect life, right? We, we, in, in biology class, we, we, get, we get a little something and, and we dissect it from a young age and we say, oh, we understand life now. And we got the parts over here. The only problem is the thing's dead. You really can't understand it until you see it alive. In Western thought, we divorce faith. We make it a thing as opposed to something that is a relationship, something that's living. In Jewish thought, you could never divorce faith from life. Because faith was living and breathing. It was, like, it was like having a heart pumping in relationship 
with the one whom you had faith in. Jesus is here calling us to a way of life that connects us in a living relationship with God. Repent and receive this relationship in Jesus Christ. And live every moment of your lives in Him and in His kingdom. You love your wife not because she deserves it all the time, but because in Jesus Christ, God calls you to love your wife. You love your husband because God knows he doesn't deserve it all the time, but because in Jesus Christ, God calls you to love him. You love your children and lay down your lives for them, not because it's socially acceptable, something I have to do, But because in Jesus Christ, God calls you to do that. And in fact, in all these places, Jesus Christ is with you. He's empowering you. He gives you his spirit. Every step and every moment. You love your neighbor, not because they're so lovable, but because God in Jesus Christ calls you to love your neighbor. You help the one who is hurting, not only because you have this great human heart, which if we're honest, isn't so great sometimes, huh? But because in Jesus Christ, you have the heart of God towards them. And in and with Jesus Christ, you step out to them. Every single moment of your life has meaning because you live it in and with Jesus Christ through faith. Yeah, I, I, I've told this story before, but I, I always go back to this when I think along these lines. Uh, we, um, when we had uh, Sarah Jane, our, our oldest daughter, Jane, Jane took her to see, I think, her folks in Indiana. might have been her sister, and she was gone for like uh, 10 days. I, I, I was in the seminary, and she, leaved, she left. She left. She left uh, all of these uh, pre-packaged meals that I could, she froze them. You could just kind of put them in the microwave, you know? You know what I ate when she was gone? I ate yogurt. That's all I ate was yogurt. Because you know what? Meals just didn't have much meaning eating them alone. Have you ever been there? It was just something to survive on. It wasn't the relationship that we had sitting down to a meal together. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. He's always with you. That's the relationship that gives our lives meaning in every moment of our lives. It is in and with Him. The the repentance here is to turn away from life lived in ourselves and to turn to life lived in Him and just not in a textbook way, in a in a way that we're dissecting things, but in a living, moving way. Martin Luther said of faith, it is a living, busy, vital, active thing. Oh, what great words, huh? Living, busy, vital, active thing. It's a live thing. And he says about faith, it's impossible for it not always to be looking to do good. Why? Because of that, of who we walk with by faith. Of who we live with by faith. All day long, every day, talk to him. Know that he's with you. Know that every moment and every calling has meaning in him. Okay. Jesus said these words, And come follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So he calls him to faith, and then he says these words. I have to ask you a question. Is faith active or passive here? You see, God comes to us by His Spirit, and He gives us this gift. This, he whispers to our hearts, and He works this miracle of life within us, this, this life of faith. And it, it, it's kind of interesting. The Bible, uh, lo, there, there's two words for life. The one is bios. It means biological life. And the other one is zoe. It means life with God. Faith is life with God. Faith is like getting the spiritual heart pumping. That's what God does. And just as I can jump off a cliff and end my life physically, I can do that spiritually. Or I can receive that life. 
To receive it means I live in it. I walk with Jesus. I follow him. And even as I follow him, he drops back and he puts his arm around me. And he walks with me. Faith is always active. It's received passively. It's lived actively. So, today Jesus offers us and calls us to a life worth living. Do you struggle with that? He wants to give you this gift today. He calls us to relationship in Him. He calls us to work, to live and work in His kingdom. He calls us to action in Him. And living and working in His kingdom is, is in every moment of our lives loving in His name and living in His name. Where do you especially need to hear this call? Where are you struggling, wondering if there's purpose in your life? Jesus Christ right there steps into your life to live it with you. Where do you need to receive this by faith? And as you look at your life, what what should this look like? As you step out in faith in Him, as you fill it with the purpose of living for and in Jesus Christ. Life is meaningless without Him. In Him, every breath we take, every thing we undertake, and every person we have relationship with, in all of these things, is great meaning as we live and love in His name. And more than that, personally, with Him, together. That's pretty a gift, isn't it? That's God's gift for you today. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life.